Hello again everybody, Thomas Pollock here from Profile Tree in another f short film editing in Premiere tutorial. And this is chapter 3, this time we're going to look at the timeline, some keyboard shortcuts, and a workflow for short film editing. So, uh, what you see is I have created a string out, we talked about this before, and I have my assembly timeline which will be uh, further down the line. So, as an example, I have here my synced up audio, already synced up. This is one camera, and what I'm going to show you really briefly is a workflow, say, if you have two camera setups, which is the case sometimes with your film shoots, if you have you know, a particular way you want to shoot it, you've only got one go at it. So I have my synced up audio and one camera, so I'm going to drag the next camera footage in. And this is the way, what you can do. So this is all the shots, and I can drag these over roughly to where I had a two camera setup. And then I could start syncing that up, and the best thing to do for that is to just go through. And this is where this is where a time slip becomes very effective. Um, we did it quite distant, and you can do it better yourself. You bring it closer; it'll have all the information in there, you know. But essentially, as long as you hear the, that's why we also say in the audio for uh, recording, take one, take two, and the information with the shot. So. Whenever we come to sync it, we can easily just listen for that rather than try to read whatever's on this because often there isn't time to get everything done and that's that's pretty much it. So what I can do now is toggle between these two, just place that to fit. So what I can do is try to find the area that that's happening and it becomes a little bit difficult. So you just go through. And that is where, so that's where on that clip, the audio syncs. And you can use markers here too if you want. I don't usually, but say that, say I know, right, so we know where the clack is. It's on that marker. And now I can look for the, 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 the clack in this one, which is right there. So what I can do is bring that over and line it up with my arrow. And that means now this will be in, this will be in sync. So you're able to toggle between the tracks, like so. You can mute your audio tracks here again, or hit solo for your good audio. So now, when I'm doing this, I can look at both clips from the two angles. Simple as that. Um, so yeah, you can do that and sync up lots of stuff. I'll just sync up that one just for now and that's one way you can have your workflow. So in the last episode we talked about markers and how you can use them to effectively help yourself when it comes to editing notes and stuff. So say you've got your string out here and this was the best take and I liked it. So here are some keyboard shortcuts on how to use the timeline a bit better. As you can see you've got all these different settings. So over here you've got like things like the type tool, um, hand tool, pen tool, Slip to the razor, ripple edit, and your selection tool. And this is where keyboard shortcuts come in, come in handy for when you're going to trim footage. You say I wanted to use. So we know video two is my second camera. So I'll toggle that off because I don't want to use that right now. I want to use this stuff. Uh, if I hit C or go over to here, the razor tool, this is how you create cuts. And I can simply click there and then click over here. And as you can see, I have not linked my my audio. I have not linked my audio yet, so I would have to go down here also to grab it. And then if you hit V, or the selection tool, this means I can now go in and click. So if I click this and this and holding shift, I have now made a selection. And usually this is what I do. I, I, I'm, you know, this is kind of what a lot of people do when they're editing. You, you have your string out and then this you're going to start building your scene. So you can drag that over to your other timeline, your other sequence. And this starts to make things a lot neater. And when it comes to larger films, you can use Premiere to edit features. And that's when you start to become very organized. And you have to add a necessity because if you're working with hundreds, if not thousands of clips, it can get messy. So you're able to create new sequences per scene or whatever way you like. So this is an assembly for that scene. And you can just start renaming it whatever way you want. So yeah, that's the way you can do that. And you can also... As I said about linking footage, say I wanted to, you can also group if you do that. You can 
group the footage, which means then this all comes as one bundle. And if I create a cut, it'll not it'll not cut everything. So that's handy enough. But uh, I'm not going to group that. So other stuff to know on the timeline to speed your life up is we, we did talk about what you can do here. You've got if you right click, you know you can go to you can create a mark in mark out that way also. You've got those settings right here though. Uh, show audio time units to show more precise. If you're doing audio sync, I told you about that also. Uh, go to marker, go to next marker. If you had a marker in, so so I want if I really brief if if you have a very long timeline and you want to grab go to, to where you have the next marker. Simple as that. I'm here. Go to next marker. Takes me to the next marker. If I straight forward. Now when you right click in your timeline on a clip. It gives you all different options. Um, we talk about those whenever you're in your when you're in your project. You've got your audio gain, your audio channel setting, speed duration, your label. So if you change the label, you'll see it change the color of my of my clip in the timeline. And again, you can have your system to start labeling things. Uh, other settings that you have is frame hold options that actually lets you just like do a freeze frame on a certain frame. Um, then you've got interpolation options, which I'll not get into too much, but if you, sh you might know what this is if you're having problems with your footage, if, if it happens to have lots of lines in it, it's because of the interlacing, uh, the interpolation. Well, this is a little different, this is frame sampling, you're able to change the motion blur, essentially between frames. So don't touch that, you don't need to touch that. Then you're able to make the sub clip, and I'll show you briefly what you can do with that. So say there's a certain clip I want to use uh, for this. If I just wanted to get rid of that clacker board altogether, this is the same clip. What I can do now is make a sub clip, and you know, I can name this too. I don't know, shot one. I know it's not shot one, but if the, uh, just for namesake, that is now going to pop up in in here as shot one. So. Yeah, simple as that. So it's making other clips out of what you have, which can be helpful in any situation if you were just wanting to cut around stuff. But uh, other settings that we have all include nesting sequences and making a subsequence. Uh, and a subsequence, it is it just makes a new sequence. So that's again that's how you can divide things up. There's multiple ways to do all this stuff. Because you can also, another very helpful one is when it comes towards the end of the edit, say you have your assembly and you have a couple of clips together. So, uh, let's say I have all this stuff and that's my edit, that's my short film edit right here uh, for one scene. If I hit out and in, that's my in and out point. What I can do is once I've done this, is you do this towards the end of your workflow whenever you've done your sign and your color. Uh, there's certain steps that you take. Once you have your assembly and your picture lock, they will call it, as soon as you know that's exactly what you want, then you can start going into the audio and the picture uh, color correction, color grading. But we're able to nest the sequence, and this can make it one, uh, one whole sequence. So say that was my first scene. As you can see what that's done with the video, but not, not the audio, but just the video. It's made the video all one clip. So this means, for instance, if I want to color crack that one sequence, I can now drag that over. Uh, but another way you can do that without having the nest a sequence is adjustment layers. And I'll get that into that once I show you one more thing with the sequences. Another thing you can do is say that assembly's done. Um, you can go in and grab it from your project folder. And new sequence from clip. And that turns that assembly into one clip for both the audio and the video. And again, it makes it a lot neater to look at down the line. So, another thing we can do, uh, another thing we can create is, so new item, you can create a new sequence, a new adjustment layer, black video, exactly what it is, bars and tone, it's those colors on the screen that makes a, the beep sound, like when your TV's broke or something like that. Uh, transparent video, HD bars and tone. So. Adjustment layer are very, very helpful. I don't use them much myself, but they can be very, very helpful. So for, in for instance, if I 
wanted a preset color correction to go over a certain amount of space. I can add that to my adjustment layer instead. So I'll bring up the color correction real quick I'm not, uh, as an example, or if it was an effect, for example. Say I did this, okay? I've made my footage a bit darker. I've changed the tones. This is now the adjustment layer doing the work. So if I toggle the track that it's on, it turns it on. So you're able to do that. And that can become helpful when you have a lot of clips and you're wanting to uh, also maybe preview a lot of different styles. You can just put them above, have loads of different ones, and then toggle between certain looks. So yeah, that's very helpful. Another thing I'll look at is just using the different tracks that you have. And as I showed you before, you're able to scroll up and down to make them bigger. I'll bring that up. So I'll use the editing workspace. So you're able to do that. I'll just make this smaller make my normal audio bigger. So toggling tracks can come in handy when you come to adding more stuff into your footage and you don't want to mess it up. So yeah, watch this. So if you're copy and pasting stuff, for instance, if you have a frame that you're wanting to have repeated, so I'm going to choose this little clip here. So if I hit Control C and then say I want to have this play over here somewhere, Control V. Now that's been toggled to, to overwrite, but say I wanted that up here instead, not to overwrite anything. Um, this can be this is usually whenever you're doing sound effects. I would say this is very helpful. So what I can do is over here, these are the tracks that are being targeted. And if I take that away and I target this track instead, um, when I come to hit Control V, it adds it there. But as you can see, the audio layer is still targeted as the same. You can change that. So if I selected so A2 V2, bang, you can see that it is now. Uh, adding it to there instead. And another helpful thing is when you come to moving clips around towards the end of your edit, you have a lot of footage, and say you want to go back and make something a second longer or a second shorter, but you don't want to, or you want to add another clip in, and you don't want to overwrite, what you can do is you can hold in control, and then that shifts it all aside. But yeah, so you can see that. And another thing is, so you want to extend the length of that clip. But it won't let you, you know, if you want to have the preview before that. If you hold in control, you'll see it go yellow, goldish color. Go to the edge of your clip, boom. And then it doesn't overwrite anything and it just makes it longer there and shifts everything. So if I want to make that shorter, you know, if I don't hold control, it does that. But if I hold down control, it shifts everything. And that can become very handy down the line when you've got a lot of stuff going on. Other things in the timeline you have here is being able to lock tracks. And that's good if, you know, you've got your audio synced and you want to keep it secure. You want to make sure things can't be moved. You can just hit that, which means then I can't click that at all. So if I start dragging stuff, now I have to be careful that if I start dragging that, then it'll come out of sync. So you're able to do that. You can lock your tracks down. Simple as that, and yeah, so I showed you this track. Uh, I already showed you how to make your, your tracks visible and invisible. Easy as that. And if you want to add more tracks, you can right click, add tracks, or add a track, delete tracks. So if I want to add tracks, this means I can add video and audio at the same time. So I can add, f I can add four new video tracks, I can add five new audio tracks. And you can set which kind of track you want. We can just keep it as standard. But yeah, you can see the settings for mono, surround sound, and all that sort of thing. So that's pretty much it for workspaces and ideas of workflow. In the next episode, we'll get more in depth into that. We'll look at we'll look at using effects and titles, transitions, and a little bit about keyframing and animation. So that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs>